In our next example in the Doppler shift, we're going to see how wind plays a factor in the frequency heard by the observer when a source puts out the frequency, let's say, of 500 hertz. So frequency 500 hertz uh, from the source. So what will the observer hear who is walking towards the source as the source is moving towards the observer, but also there's a wind blowing from the left to the right of 10 meters per second. So it turns out that wind actually causes the movement of the sound waves to be faster. The whole medium, all the air that carries the sound moves to the right, which has an effect of making the velocity of sound quicker. So what the equation turns out to be, this will then be um, velocity, uh, the frequency observed is equal to the frequency of the source, so let's call it frequency of the source, times, and the equation normally is, velocity of sound and air divided by velocity of sound and air plus or minus the velocity of the observer and plus or minus the velocity of the source. Of course, the plus or minus is de determined by figuring out whether or not the observer will hear higher or lower frequency depending upon what they're doing. But in addition to that, the wind is blowing in the same direction as the movement of the sound waves towards the observer, which has the effect of making the, the motion of the sound waves faster and so we have to add the velocity of the wind in this direction and add the velocity of the wind down here. So in essence, instead of having a sound velocity of 340 meters per second, you'll now have an effective sound velocity of 350 meters per second. All right, now we still have to determine what these are. Let's plug in the numbers and see what that is. So this is equal to 500 hertz times, this would be 340 plus 10, divided by 340 plus 10. Velocity observer is 5 meters per second. Velocity of the source is 20 meters per second. But this is a plus or minus. Well, again, since the observer is moving towards the source, he will meet up with the waves more quickly, which means they have the effect of being shorter in wavelength. Shorter wavelength means higher frequency. So we want to have a plus in the numerator to make the ultimate result higher. At the same time, the source is moving towards the observer, which means that the waves will be coming quicker or closer together, which means that the frequency observed by observer also will be higher. But this is in the denominator to have a higher frequency here. What does the denominator have to do? It has to become smaller, and therefore we need to subtract the velocity of the source. And that should give us the correct velocity with the wind, so this is 340 plus 10 plus 5, that would be 355, divided by 350 minus 20, that's divided by 330, and multiply times 500, equals. So that would be a frequency of 537.9 hertz. 537.9 hertz. Now, to compare that, what would it be if there was no wind? If it was wind still, well then the tens would go away, this, they would become zero, and then we would have 345 divided by 320 times the frequency of the source. So let's try that. That would be 345 divided by 320, and multiply that times 500, and that will give us 539.1. So otherwise that would be 539.1 hertz without the wind. So you see that the wind does have a factor in determining the frequency observed. That's how you do that. In our next example, we'll try this with the wind blowing the opposite direction to see what will happen then.